Hi Storytime lovers, I cannot tell you how utterly thrilled and honored I am to be presenting you today's story, We Wait for the Sun, an uplifting and beautiful book written by Katie McCabe and legendary civil rights lawyer and activist Dovey Roundtree. Do you know what an activist actually is? It's a person who believes in political and social change and takes part in activities such as protests to try and make this happen. In other words, an activist is someone who not only wants to make the world a better place, but makes sure that this happens. And that's the kind of person Dovey Roundtree was. And I'm sure that your parents and teachers have already read you books about famous activists. Can you think of some? Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, and recently Malala Yousafzai might be the ones that you have heard of. Today's book talks about the beautiful relationship between activist Dovey Roundtree and her grandmother as they go blackberry picking. This magical childhood experience is key to understanding the joy that pulsed through her life and gave her the strength to become the trailblazer she was. So, what kind of an activist was Dovey Roundtree? As I said in the introduction, she was a civil rights activist. Do you know what civil rights are? They are your rights to equality and freedom as a citizen. Dovey Roundtree was born in a time when black people did not have equal rights and she made sure all her life to challenge injustice and right the wrongs. And if you want to find out more, which you absolutely need to, head to Katie McCabe's website. Katie McCabe is the co-author of this book and she worked for 12 years with Dovey Roundtree to write Mighty Justice and Mighty Justice Young Readers Edition. That way, all the family, grown-ups, teens and children can learn about this incredible woman. By the way, when you get your own copy of We Wait for the Sun, you will have access to the full context of Dovey Roundtree's life thanks to the book's back matter. So please, get this book for your family, get it for a friend, it is a book that needs to be shared. And now, let me take you blackberry picking. In the hour before dawn, we slip out of the house, and the midsummer night is dark and cool. As I follow the swish swish of my grandmother's skirts, I can smell the damp earth beneath my feet and feel the dewy air on my face. Moving through the darkness toward the woods where blackberries grow, I'm certain Grandma Rachel and I are the only ones awake in the whole world. As if by some special secret signal, the others appear in doorways and fall into line one by one behind us. By daylight, these are the grown-up ladies who come to quilt with Grandma, passing food over the fence, gathering in our backyard for soap making. But now, they are just shadowy figures in our silent march, our secret mission, our berry picking. It grows cooler as we enter the forest, and darker. Dovey May? Grandma calls out. I'm right here, I answer. Right over here. The darkness isn't anything to be afraid of, child. If you just wait a little, your eyes will learn to see, and you can find your way. Hold on to my apron now. We begin to walk. Grandma's steps are swift and sure, and I move as she does. I fix my eyes on the shiny heels of her shoes, and I listen. The darkness holds a thousand sounds. As we push deeper and deeper into the woods, the blackness turns to grey, and sleepy birds begin calling to each other, sending echoes through the treetops. Grandma says the birds will lead you to the best berries every time. Sure enough, 
As we follow the sound of the beating wings just ahead, we come into a clearing ringed with berry-studded bushes. The ladies swoop down, pails clanging, but I move closer to Grandma, following the sweep of her hand as it grazes a bush and comes back with the first berry of the day, frosted with dew. I open my mouth, she drops in the berry, and I bite down hard and suck the juice and know that there is no blackberry anywhere like this one. So fat it squirts seedy blue juice down my overalls, and so sweet I keep licking my lips to get the taste. Grandma looks down at me and laughs. Then she turns to the bushes and starts to hum the way she does when it's time to get to work. The clearing fills with the sound of berries hitting tin pails. From my spot in the bushes, I pick berries as fast as I can and listen to the whispers of the goings-on at church. Already, heat is rising from the forest floor making me think of the feast that is coming in just a little while, of how I'll eat berries from the minute I get home to the minute I go to bed. Again and again, Grandma reaches low or stands tiptoe to pluck berries, and then suddenly, in the middle of her rush, she stops. Look, Dovey May, she whispers, over yonder. Slowly, slowly, the horizon pinkens. Here she comes, Grandma whispers. She draws me to her, and together we watch the pink turn to red, the red to gold. Then, all at once, as if at my grandmother's command, the orange ball that is the sun shows its face. It rises up over the edge of the world, and as it does, Grandma rises too, and stands, just looking, her face shining in the light. I don't know how long we stay there watching, but when Grandma claps her hand on my shoulder and shakes out her skirts, dawn is day. My grandmother turns and heads down the path, quick and hurried again, leading me home. When I think of Grandma, I see her there, standing in the clearing, pale and sack at her feet, face upturned to meet the dawn. Always I see her, waiting for the sun. Thank you so much for listening everyone. Please check out the information in the description box below and feel free to leave a comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my new Instagram page for even more book recommendations. Take care, read on and see you soon.